Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Um, I wanted to say that I was late. I've been late this week on getting our weekly um, little email out. So if you guys are on the Bold Pearls email list, there's gonna be an email that goes out today. It may be this evening, but I'm getting that um, squared away and finished up and stuff like that. So it'll go out to you all today. So thank you for being patient if you've been wondering where the email is. Um, and I wanted to come on and talk to you guys a little bit about vocation versus calling. And I think it's like a really fun topic because I hope some of you have been following along on the Advent series that I'm doing over on the Bull Pearls Facebook page every day during this Advent season. It is so much fun and is super um it's been super helpful in keeping me accountable for this Advent season and really like honing in on the importance and the purpose and keeping all the junk at bay and not getting like caught up in just this the stress of it all because frankly it can be like this time of year can be very stressful especially if you have kids and so um I've just been loving doing that Advent series and so um lately there's been a couple things that have come to um come to light that have been like repetitive in me um like what I'm talking about in the Advent series and this um, devotional that I've been working through. It's called Made for This, 40 Days of Living Your Purpose. And it's by um, Jenny Allen, and I love her. She is, like her voice is very similar. The things she writes about reminds me of things that I like either write about or think about. Like I love her. She's like amazing. Every book I've gotten of hers, every devotional I've gotten of hers, or Bible study I've gotten of hers, have been so um, perfectly pointed for the season that I'm in. And this has been no less accurate. It has been amazing. I like highly, highly recommend this. So, in part of this week's like theme, I guess, in this devotional has been talking about purpose and like what we love or like what this is I just want to say this is like a timeless it's a timeless thing I think that we all deal with at some point in life and I've been always curious about my purpose my calling what I need to do my time that has been an anthem of my life um I had like a midlife crisis in my 20s um when I got like the first year I got married I like went through another transition when I had my children I've in the last year I've gone through another transition so it's just kind of been like a theme to my life and um I just think it's just God working in me and like pruning me in different ways that need to be you know, developed more. And so one thing topic she talked about this week was, um, let me, I have some Christmas music playing, hang on, was, um, vocation versus calling. So a lot of us, you know, you hear the whole cliche, like do what you love and the money will follow or do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And what she points out is like, God never promised that that was going to be our life. Like, Oh, just follow me and your life's going to be super easy and you're going to get everything you've ever wanted and I'll bless you beyond measure and you'll never need for anything in your life. That is a big fat lie and that is not truth (laughs) and that is not what he promises. Um, He promises that he will never forsake you, that everything he is doing in your life is for good. It doesn't mean it's going to feel good or be good or all that things. It means it's for good. So there's a bigger ripple effect than the hard crap that you're facing. And that is like so eye-opening to me because, or not eye-opening, I want to say that I've kind of always been aware of that, but I think it's eye-opening in our society today because everyone just thinks, you know, it's supposed to be easy and personal development is like a dime a dozen, like, there's so, and I am a believer of personal development because I believe it always will end up pointing us to Christ and our need for him and growing in him and becoming more like Christ. And that's the whole purpose of us being here. And so I love personal development. I'm obsessed with it and I research it literally every single day. Like I love reading psychology, psychologists and psychiatrists and like I read so much and research so much about so many different things about personality because it's something I'm genuinely like interested in. I love learning about how people think and how they work and how our brains work and our emotions work. It's just fascinating to me. 
and so what she talks about so going so thinking about that thinking about that like everything's not going to be easy and all that's crap it's because that isn't the gospel and that isn't the reality but the reality is though that everything he's doing even through all the hard stuff that we have to face is for a purpose and it is for good it's for a good purpose you may not see it right now you may not understand it right now but it is for a good purpose and so when we talk specifically about our calling our our work it can be very hard and i know from personal experience i've been in jobs that have been mind numbing that have been miserable that have sucked the life out of me and made me just like what is happening um and it's horrible it is a horrible place to be horrible place to be um and then there's people that like you know the drudgery of just work and all this stuff and and then getting lost in who you are because you just become this job you become this this person this persona and this like big corporate world or whatever type of context you work in and you're just living for this job um and then you're wondering what your calling is and where does my calling fit in and all this stuff. So I kind of want to simplify this because she simplified it for me in this devotional. And um, this has just been a mindset that I've been working on. So most of us are not going to have a job that perfectly aligns with our calling and we love and it and it pays all of our bills and meets all of our dreams. That is like... Y'all, that is so rare. Yes, does it happen? But I would say even the people that it's happened to would say that what they love have has become a job. And it's not nearly as fun and 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 wonderful as it once was, okay? Um, work is work. And that is part of our burden being here. When Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, that was our consequence hard child labor hard toiling through on in the ground to get what we needed because before they had fallen god provided everything in the garden and everything was beautiful it was heaven on earth and then after the fall it wasn't and so this is what we're living out right and we're having to understand our role and so this i want to encourage you that i want to encourage you in this and that there is a specific purpose for where you're at in your life. And even if your job is not meeting boxes, um, don't ignore it. Be aware of that. But know that like God is in that with you at that moment. And yeah, he may not deliver you from that job. And it may not be clear what you're to do. But you are. Honey, stop. Okay, I'll help you in one second. I'm doing a video right now. And I'll help you in one second, okay? Um, he is going to provide what is needed at the time that is needed. And what's, so what's your job? What do you need to do? You need to be in prayer about it. You need to be understanding his truth and relying on his truth that he's going to carry you through. And those days that I literally cried from Sunday afternoon till Monday morning, because I knew I had to face another week at this soul sucking job. It was misery, but I did. That's probably a very, that was definitely a turning point in my relationship with Christ because I had to rely on him each day to like get me through the day because I just I could not do that job and it was horrible so I would encourage you if you're in that situation show up and do your job well because that's what he expects of you and know that he's working through it through you you're learning about yourself you're learning what makes you tick you're learning what um what you value what you what is of priority to you and that became very clear to me it wasn't i didn't care how much i was making at that job it wasn't worth it like i didn't care it didn't it did not it was not where i was supposed to be but i learned that through being there and you know some great examples of this are like joseph in the bible he for years was like a slave and was washing floors in Potiphar's house and waiting on people hand and you know uh I just lost my train of thought waiting on people hand and foot and um and, and just serving people and and washing washing floors then he was put in prison and sat in prison for years just looking at a cell wall 
And, you know, it talks about his spirit during that time in the Bible. And, like, he showed up. Even if he was scrubbing Potiphar's floors, he showed up. Even when he was in prison, he showed up. He was there with his mind and his heart. And he was present. And that served him later when he needed to learn forgiveness and learn what it meant to help people that needed it and all that stuff. When his family came back and they had nothing and he was in a position of power and he showed mercy and grace and he empathized with their position because he had been in terrible positions. You know, there's there's countless examples of people doing hard stuff, hard stuff and living through hard stuff and always coming out better, always coming out and even walking in the midst of it, being being okay with where they were. And I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying it's not okay to feel ticked and angry and upset and frustrated and feel lonely and feel lost and feel let down like those are okay feelings those are normal feelings and you're gonna feel that way when you're in a crap situation I almost said the other word when you're in a crap situation but here is the good news the good news is that God is in all of it and he can work it together for his for your good for his good and it's all for a purpose and so when you're thinking about your calling, this is what I'm telling you. Your calling and your purpose is to love Christ, to be a light to people. That is your calling. You don't have to figure out anything else. Show up every day for the Lord. Show up for him. Show up for him and be what you can be. And some days it's, it's not going to happen. Some days you're not going to be able to be like Christ to other people because you're having a, a hard day and that's okay. That's okay, but if you're if your like general mindset is that I'm showing up for Christ today, your day is gonna be better. Your day is gonna be more fulfilling. Your day is gonna feel purposeful, even when you're in a job that is sucking the life out of you, even when you feel confused and lost with what's going on in your life and how where you fit in and what you're supposed to be doing with this situation that you're living out every day. Like if you come with the mindset that you are living today for Jesus that you are living with Christ in your heart, you are going to have a purposeful life. I can promise you. Your life is purposeful. It is every single moment that you're alive. And how do you know? Because you are alive. God is not finished with you. God is not done with your energy and your effort and your story. He's not done. You're still here. So I just want that to be encouraging. I want that to be life-giving because it is so life-giving to me. Because there are days that I literally get nothing done except housework and dinner made and baths done and snuggles and putting kids to bed and a pile of laundry on my couch that hasn't been folded in days and a, a list of stuff I need to get done that I haven't checked off one thing and I feel such like a failure like what am I doing what what is happening right now this is so stupid like this is meaning nothing but that's not true that is not true and it's easy to get in that mindset and it's easy to get in that rut and it's easy to feel defeated and isolated and lonely and forgotten but you are not you are not And God is working in all those things because I promise you, if you're struggling like that mentally, there's a work happening. There's a work happening in your life and you have to be receptive to it. You have to have your heart open to it. You have to have your cap on for that day that says, I am living today for God. And when I'm like having a really crappy day, when my kids are like bouncing off the walls, not listening, arguing, fighting, being so loud that you can't even think, you know, causing mess after mess after mess and all that other stuff is going on. I swear when I literally think that thought, like I'm living today for God, it is such a shift in how I finish my day and how I respond and not be so quick to anger and aggravation and all these things. And that sounds like such a simple thing. But y'all, it is powerful and it is that simple and you may not have things figured out and you may not know exactly what you need to do every day and you may, you may not be in a season of motherhood or whatever. You may be single and trying to figure out your, your career path or you may be have, you know, be an empty nester and not have kids at home and 
trying to figure out your identity. I mean, there's so many different seasons in life, but here's the one thing. Our only purpose is to show up for God every day. There's nothing else to figure out when it comes to your purpose or your calling. We all have unique skills and gifts and talents that God gave us and unique voices. And if we approach our day that we are living this day for the Lord, all of those things are going to come through. Your ability to organize, your ability to keep people motivated, your ability to speak life and encouragement, your ability to be patient, your ability to decipher information quickly and on the go and can make fast decisions, all these things, you know, your ability to speak and your ability to, and to, um, you know, do all these things. I just lost my train of thought. Do all these things like that. All these things are going to come through. They're going to come through in your day when you're approaching your day that you're living today for Christ. And yeah, it's hard. It can be so hard. But I'm telling you guys, that is your purpose. That is your purpose. And yes, when you start to think about that, when you start to come to your day like that, little things that you didn't see before that God's opening and God's putting in your path and God's giving you and all these, all these little nuances, they're going to start, you're going to start seeing them because you're going to be outside of your, yourself in this mode of self-preservation in this mode of like trying to like get to this happy place. You're going to be outside of that because your contentment is in him. Your contentment is knowing that as long as I'm focused today on the Lord, like it's all going to, it's all going to fall into place. Like all you've you've let go of so much headspace by coming to your day like that that all of the little things God is like putting in your pathway putting in your day um to experience and to more fully engage with like you're going to be aware of it it's going to make sense it's going to start falling into place you're going to start getting an getting an idea for something else for you know whatever i mean i'm talking in generalities because i'm trying to help you guys see whatever circumstance you're in this applies to you so this is the beauty this is the beauty of 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 having christ in our life this is the beauty of knowing the truth and so i just implore you and pray for you guys to just hold on to the truth hold on to what the truth is and it's going to carry you it's going to carry you your entire life um so i wanted to share that with you guys it was just on my heart to share that and You know, I've just been having such an insane amount of contentment, which is very not like me. Um, (coughs) It's not an aspect of my life that I'm proud of. I've, I've, I've struggled with being content um, because I'm just so much of a controller and a micromanager and a planner and a, uh, a perfectionist and (laughs) these so not great qualities, um, and they keep me from happiness because my thought is, well, when I can get this done, when this happens, when blah, blah, this is when I'll be fully living and all this stuff. And it's just like time is passing me by. No one said I was going to be alive tomorrow. No one said that that was ever going to happen. And so what? I'm just not going to live now. I'm going to live for this like thing or I'm going to be constantly thinking about the past and the past has already happened. There, There's no reason to like live in turmoil over things, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, wow, I've just been shifting my mindset to being present and waking up each day with the first thing on my mind that today is for the Lord. Today is for the Lord. Today is for the Lord. And it's very life-giving and it has brought me so much contentment and I want that for each of you because I know what it feels like to live in discontent and that is not how God intended us to live. That is not why Jesus Christ came back to earth and died for us. That is not why. We are supposed to have a renewed life, a renewed heart and all these things and that is what is life-giving. That is the purpose and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it is it's everything that everyone tells you it's like to live for Christ. So I just want to encourage you guys to just and to just come to your day like that. And if you're hopping in and out, come back and watch the beginning because it all ties together. And I want you guys to hear this because I just feel like it's not anything for me. It's from God. Just putting this these thoughts and these feelings in my heart. And I just want to share them with you guys because it's been so life giving for me. 
and I want that for everybody and anybody. Um, and it's something that I'm just continually working through. And so I think it feels good to know that there's other people that relate to what I'm saying and can, um, we can talk about it and build a community around it. So I love you all so much. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Um, type replay for watching it on the replay. Um, drop your favorite emoji or GIF. I love GIFs. I love seeing GIFs. And when I see a good new one, I love to use it. <laughs> um, so if this spoke to you, drop your favorite emoji or GIF and let me know that you guys, um, you guys heard me. <laughs> um, but I love y'all and I hope you have a fantastic comp day. Bye.